So apparently every bad thing that happens in this game is because of this thing here, this moon orbiting jewel, because apparently it's the home of the Kraken, which is the force behind everything breaking. So we're gonna go there and see how true that is. And I hate to say it, this probably isn't the vessel to do it, because there's just been a lot of problems that come up with like the landing gear and it just inexplicably phasing through planets. Oh dear. Huh? Whoa. Wait, what? So we'll need to retrofit this thing to actually survive going all the way to Bop, because that's the name of the planet, not the planet, the moon. Plus this thing also just has an egregious amount of fuel anyway. And according to this, we don't really need that much. So we can fit this thing with a smaller fuel tank. Of course, no one said we need to go that much smaller, just something that's gonna be more usable. And I'm thinking we could also change out this command pod for something more circular. That doesn't look too bad. And we really don't need a parachute for that. So instead of a parachute we'll just put a nose cone on there and we'll need this thing to be very maneuverable once we get close to the surface of bop so let's put on some rcs thrusters and a few of them and then we might need some fuel tanks to accommodate them actually there's a better spot for these we'll just rip this off put a mono propellant tank right there and down here and then we'll put these little things on here that should be pretty good and then we'll just get in a little adapter like that there we go that's looking a lot more like a rocket than the last one but now the hard part is figuring out how we land this thing we could put some wheels on here and just try to land it sideways because last time the landing gear just popped off and I really don't think this would gut it. So I feel like the best way we're going to land this thing is just to have a bunch of wheels going some which way, something like that. And then down here like this, I think that could land it maybe, but they're not really going the right way. Maybe we just need a set of BV Rover wheels like this. That could work. It's also got quite a bit of brake torque behind it. The only thing would be keeping this thing powered up. Thank Thankfully, that's what these are for. It's like we're firing up another rocket-powered car. And now comes the time-consuming process of straying everything down because the struts like to break. Okay, all the struts are in place, and I think we're ready for liftoff. I also added some more up here just to try and stabilize it a bit more. And an extra set of wheels so that there really isn't a way we could land this upside down. And Jebediah is ready to go on yet another excursion. So let's just get this thing off the ground. Looking good. Make sure you're going straight up. Okay, we're still getting a little bit of a wobble, so I guess there's no helping that. Mostly because the wobble is happening around the coupler point. But the good news is the program is still pointed straight up. So as much wobble as there is, we're actually doing really good. It's a little concerning because the wobble seems to get wider at some points, but then it fixes itself. And now we're past 7,000 meters, so normally we turn here. I really don't trust it. Unless we start to get this thing pointed prograde and then tilt. Okay, it's a little more. Ooh, that's what I was afraid of. Let's just separate so there's less mass. Okay, um, not sure what's blowing up there. Nothing important, it looks like. And then once this thing is pointed the right way around again, we will start to burn again. Okay. And ooh, oh, that's what we lost. And that's why I don't like to turn this thing. But this next attempt should be okay, as long as we decide to not change anything else. It is getting a little bit wider, which is concerning, but then it fixes itself. So it's really going back and forth on that. And, oh, I really don't like how much it's wobbling. Keep it together, Jebediah. There we go, there we go. It's looking good. It's looking a lot better now. Atmosphere is thinner, so there should be a lot less air resistance. Okay, so then we separate and fire again as soon as possible. Keep it, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. You're not keeping it together. Ah, where are you going? Come on, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. There you go, you're fixing it, you're fixing it. Then go straight up if you can, or actually, I don't know where you're going, but just don't spin around again. There we go, there we go. Yes, the RCS things are working a lot better now because we're almost entirely out of atmosphere. I think we can actually point this thing prograde. I think prograde's going the right direction now. Uh, no it isn't, that's going west. But you know what, it's what we gotta work with, so we're doing it. And then prograde just shifted, so now we're going straight up, which I think means that we can and start to tilt this thing the way that we want to go, which is east. Kind of over this direction. Just got to keep it like this. There we go. That's working. Prograde is shifting. Maybe a little more. Okay. We got to separate down like this. Very good. Now keep it steady right here. There we go. I think we're fixing trajectory. Even though we're still kind of going straight up. Just got to shift the prograde marker until it gets to the 90. The good news is the wheels don't cause any drag in space because nothing does. There we go. And now we can go prograde. How are we looking? Not too bad. Not not too bad. We've managed to correct it. We are going a little bit up in our trajectory, but 
that's pretty acceptable, I think. And now these boosters are done, so we separate those. I still absolutely love that that works as well as it does. But now we can wait until we get to Apoapsis before burning again. And all of these RCS boosters are gonna be working their little butts off to make sure we stay pro grade. Are the wheels spinning right now? I think they are. What are you doing? Turning off all the motors. We don't need them using up all of our electricity. And we have a lot of this uh, mono propellant here for the corrections. I think we're still able to keep it together. And Jebediah is doing a little happy dance in his seat. Battery has to use a bathroom, in which case that's a terrible time to realize that. So now we're forward a little bit. And yeah, this thing doesn't have a lot of luck with the correcting itself. Or does it? No, it really doesn't. All right, RCS thrusters stay on. We have plenty of fuel, so we should be fine for it. And also the RCS things in the pod are doing the work themselves. Hey, look, I can see Jebediah right there. Hey, how you doing? Now that we're getting a little closer, all the boosters are still following us, more or less. And now the prograde is at a 10 degree incline. I can live with that. And now it's a little less. So let's just lock our trajectory right here and then burn. Oh, keep it together. Keep it together. Yeah, I can live with this. That's going to be going around a lot more like that. There we go. Our flight is looking very stable right now. And now we have orbit. So we're just going to push this out more until the periapsis swings around to be where we are. And now the apoapsis will leave the sphere of influence. Whoa, intercepting the mud for a little bit. Okay, and now this is what we're doing because we have to wait until the booster runs out. And we're actually going to be flying, wow, like straight out to the side. Going to be visiting the mud for a little bit, but that won't give us too much trouble. And that will just separate that. And that will fly away very gently. And we can also turn off RCS for now. How much control do we have now? It looks like we do have quite a bit of control. It's able to move on its own without RCS turning on. That's good. That means we can use a lot of fuel for when we get close to bop. And this is a weird looking space car i'll tell you that much um i think a piece just left orbit faster than we did it's also going three times faster than we are okay then see you later i guess so now where is bop right there so first let's get to jewel we can set that as a target and our trajectory looks like it's going to bring us around this way to the sun i think where's our okay it's not letting me plan a move before leaving sphere of influence so we gotta wait for that and if we're gonna do that we might as well see ourselves pass by the moon first and there the moon's getting closer we're passing on the dark side of it which is not the prettiest side but you know what can you do carbon's getting smaller over there that's really trippy to see it going by that fast whoa okay we're in the sphere of influence now and oh Oh gosh. Okay, that's really trippy looking. But yep, there it goes around like that. And then eventually, camera shifts again. So now we're leaving the moon behind. Goodbye. I wonder how many people have actually been to the second moon of Kerbin, Minmus. Like, is there anything even there? What is the purpose of you? Whoa, you look funky. Gigantic uh, low spot right here is very smooth. It's a little strange, but that's not what we're here for. So I no longer care. Okay, now it's letting me plan a move. That piece is still going. I think that's on an escape velocity from the sun. Got that's here. so weird. So Jewel is... Okay, so Jewel is over there. So if we wait until periapsis to push our orbit out, because that's the most fuel efficient, we would get way out here, and then Jewel would still be back there. So if we fix this to push out a little over here... Really enough, it's saying we don't have a lot of Delta V, which the gassing isn't that much smaller, but it's what we have to work with, and I think we can get this working. Oh, okay. Here we go. So if we just slingshot past jewel first we'll intercept it on the way back i do like the look of that and i can kind of see where we're gonna intercept over here which is still a little above it a little and i mean a lot above it so if we go up like this then we need a little more time there so we do one of these numbers and then down and this is very fine tuning and okay i think this is a good place to start we're gonna be just ever so much above jewel so then we can plan a maneuver from there so let's just fast forward till we get there leaving Kerbin behind and then three two one and then we burn and we'll be here a while but how are we looking out here i haven't checked okay it's still growing which is good and then we stop yes yes we're on a capture well not a capture but we're gonna pass by Jewel. And this is also the only time this orbit's gonna look like this. Then we're gonna be way out there. So they were gonna be cutting very close through the um, moons. And Bop is the second one. 
So we're actually gonna be very, very close to it. So once we get this thing pointed towards the maneuver point, we can go ahead and fast forward, watching the trajectory change as we do. But now I think for this burn, I'm just gonna focus on Jewel and watch this blue line up here creep down into this one. And this is only gonna be a five second burn. So this is gonna be pretty quick. Three, two, one and burn and stop. Okay, we overshot a little bit. Should be fine though. This actually might be better for us because Bop is down here. So where are we gonna be at that point? Uh, let's set you as a target. But now we are on target to pass through Jewel's sphere of influence. And okay, so let's see. Now that we're at this point, I guess we can set a maneuver right here. And then we'll really need to go retro to get captured by Jewel. And wow, yeah, that really needs a lot in order to be captured. We don't have enough fuel for that. But this also isn't the most ideal strategy. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait. Hopefully we can save a lot of fuel by waiting till here. And oh, there's a capture. Okay, dial it a little bit back. So now we have a capture for jewel which is good the bad news is it doesn't leave us with very much fuel but you know as long as we get there and we'll slow down okay we're good oh and there's jewel right there very nice can't quite see any of the moons yet but they're also going to be incredibly small compared to the planet now that we're here let's turn rcs off go a little bit more forward three two one burn and we're going we're going we're going and then stop Wow, we only have 150 Delta V, but that was a really good burn. Now we just need to figure out what we can do over here. Let's see, burn a little more retro. Really need to figure out where Bop is going to be. This actually isn't too bad. That might be the best thing because by the time we get out here, Bop is going to be right here. So let's wait one revolution and see where we end up from there. And then stop. So now Bop is right there. Oh, oh, that's so much better. Look at how close that is now. We can do this now. It's like the smallest of intercept windows those right there. So now where's that show up on Bop? Wow, I think I just registered how small this thing is. Gotta dial it in a little bit more so it's more center. That is looking like an ideal target right there. You can't see it, but that's where the crater is. So I don't necessarily want to collide with Bop because I really don't have enough fuel to stop. But if I can pass in front of the crater, I think that'd be really cool. Just to get as low as we can and close to it, which is right about there. So really, I don't need to watch the mission timer if it's this minor of an adjustment. I just need to watch that line go into where this one is. And there it comes down. Stop. Okay, it's on the wrong side. So let me make a fix again, going burning retro, and then a bit more normal. But we can also do this. Okay, that was a bit too much. That's fine. Gotta go a little bit back. Oh, it's very interesting. The trajectory seems to go haywire when I have RCS turned on. So if I don't, then it fixes itself. But it also is way down there. Uh, <laughs> I can almost just kind of bank on the RCS, screwing it up in the right direction. Like that! <laughs> Please tell me that works. I think it does. That's exactly where I wanted to be, and it was just because of RCS going all haywire. That is funny. And you know what? I can live with that. It's going to be a very short window, but we should get a pretty good view of the crater. We'll see when we get there. Maybe one more step up. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. Slow down. Gotta take speed a little more carefully because we're starting to speed up as we get closer to the planet. Okay, now we're on the inside of Jewel's orbit compared to the sun. You can kind of start to see the moon's orbit jewel as well. That's really cool. I wonder which one is Bob. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, now slow down. So where's Bob at compared to us? Oh, it should actually be straight ahead of us. So we need to burn some way or another to make sure we pass in front of it. But that crater does seem to be facing jewel all the time. So this should be a good spot to be once we get there. But then it's a clean four seconds of burning. So we can turn up the throttle all the way and start and just watching the line, watching the line and and we're good. Very good. Okay, nothing change about this, please. In the three hours that it takes Jebediah to get to this point. Thankfully, we don't have to wait that long. Now, let's turn RCS off in case that does weird things again. Can we see it now? Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Cool. Okay, and then stop. Now, we're only a minute away. And just look at that thing. It looks so tiny compared to, like, everything else in the solar system. But now we are in. And Whoa, camera shifted. Ooh. There's a nice green glow on our ship and on Bop as well. That's really interesting. I guess because Jewel is bright enough to reflect the sun that way. And we're going to see that crater in all of its green glory on this path. 
That's going to be cool. So let's just make sure Jebediah has a nice view of it, which it looks like he does. As long as we point this thing towards the target. Yeah, he's going to have a nice view of it. So let's go a little faster. Oh, man. I know there's no like actual Kraken, but the fact that this is like the supposed home of it is kind of a freaky thing in itself. Oh, here we go. That is so incredibly bright. It almost looks radiated. And there's the crater. Wow. I cannot believe this. It almost makes it look like an eye. That is... I see why the Kerbins are afraid of it. Holy moly. That is... Oh, yeah. Look at Jebediah's face. He is shocked. But man, oh, man. That is a cool sight to see. And Jebediah was here for it. And so are we. That's probably got to be, like, the coolest thing I've seen in this game so far. But now Jebediah is on his way away from Bop. Now he can say that he's gotten closer than anyone to the Kraken. He's just going to be here, you know, enjoying time. And then we get to leave Bop behind. So that's where we'll end it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. That was a cool sight to see. Definitely let me know if there's anywhere else you want to see me get to. Thank you very much for watching and sub to intern. And I do want to thank the channel members, including Bread, Dakota C, Mr. Cripple One, Ancient Elixir One, Corby Farm, Destructo Man, Bladed Archer, Donamoto, Devion X, Muffin Stuffer, Lucas S, Ali B, Splatter Sacks, The Real Nickname, Edward, Eyeballus, and Hateful Herald.